What you mean? And then you want to say, oh, well, yeah, I clean. You bitches be dirty. Let's just be real. Y'all don't be getting the back of the toilets like y'all should be. Y'all ain't on y'all hands and knees scrubbing the ground, cleaning the baseboards like y'all should be. Yeah, you can you can go hire a housekeeper and shit. But do you know, what if the housekeeper not available? Do you know how to keep your house clean in between when the housekeeper's not there? No, they don't. Who the fuck want to come to go home to a dirty house? Right. That's you know? Right, yeah. And then, let's not even get on the part of the having sex and all of that. Because bitch, be out of it. Is your even that good? Do you even know how to suck good? Can you make it come off a second dick, bitch? Mm. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, though. Because they be bragging like they got it all. And it's like, okay, if you do got it all, okay. But is that really the... She don't got it Is that you. the reality of the situation? You ain't got no man, though, but you ain't got no man. Like... Fruitcake opinion. I don't know about the kind of speech one should give when they decide to get married. We people get married for all kinds of reasons. And so it wouldn't be right to say or pick apart that speech. Marriage is a beautiful thing in the Western world, um, at least conceptually. The idea of marriage is about being chosen being the one, getting the ring, and being a part of something where two become one. For a lot of people, the kind of marriage doesn't really matter. And I know that sounds weird. Um, I would play Orange Pill on my platform talking about how it is not the type of marriage, but it is that you're married that is important. Instead of doing that, I will go to Ebony K. Williams, who was telling young Black women in particular that they needed to get married. And when they are in school trying to get their degrees, they should get their missus degree also. So this is Ebony K. Williams when pressed about marriage, just to drive home the point that for a lot of people, they're not about to tell you how to sustain a healthy relationship, what it means to be married, how to build a fab. No, no, that, that, that's not what this is about. This is about getting the ring, getting that ring. So here's Ebony K. Williams and what she had to say about marriage. Okay. So I'm going to skip my next clarification point because I feel like my next point is going to take longer. Um, because what you're saying, in my opinion, and this is the dissonance that came up for me in reading your book and hearing the messaging, what you're saying is antithetical, in my opinion, to what you're sharing in terms of what Black girls should be doing. Now, in stating that, one of, my, one of my questions was, you, you stated that like uh, on the Acting Up podcast, you mentioned that you cannot speak to how to be successfully married because, and I quote, uh, I have never stayed married, any of that. Like you mentioned your previous party relationship, your previous marriage was a starter marriage, you got rid of that. You stated that you're in a relationship, I believe, for four years mm -hmm. and felt that that wasn't appropriate for you either. Yeah, marriage so, is not for me. Let me just say that yeah. very plainly. Marriage is not for Ebony K. Williams, but I know it's something that many Black women do desire. I guess. So it's something that many Black women desire. But you said what you can speak to is best practices, practices and strategies to get to the marriage destination if that is your priority. You can't yes. talk about motherhood and balance because you haven't experienced that yet. Right. Because I know you shared that you're also about to go through the journey of your embryo transfer. Which embryo transfer so yeah. congratulations. Thank um, you. And when you're providing context. But my automatic question is, do you think that that's a responsible statement to make saying that I cannot speak to what it's like to maintain a marriage? Mm -hmm. However, I can speak to what you need to get there. Because like as a licensed yes. clinical psychologist, as a mental health professional, mm -hmm. that is not an appropriate dynamic, right? I can't tell you how to make it going to, to thrive as it were, but mm -hmm. I can tell you how to get to that contract. Do you feel as though that's a responsible statement for someone with such a huge platform mm -hmm. to make when you're trying to provide some aspect of this is your advice. I'm not gonna tell you how to make it work. I'm just gonna tell you how to make it. Very much so. And let me tell you why. I think it's very responsible because I'm not, I can't assume the conversations that you have amongst the black women, social circle, girlfriends in your life, Raquel, but I can tell you about mine. 
And I've asked friends, sorority sisters, black women that I'm in, I'm in close sisterhood with, and not so close sisterhood with, just black women that I'm in conversation with, flat out question. If, if And these are unmarried, never married black women who have no children. And I say, if there was a scenario and God descended from heaven and he said, uh, I'm going I'm to walk you down an aisle, you're going to get married, you're going to have your day, your big white dress, your ring, you're going to be somebody's wife, you're going to have some children. And then I'm going to tell you ahead of time, yeah, you're going to be divorced. Yeah, you're going to get divorced. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have split custody and you're going to have child support. And this, and you might even be paying the child support because of your income. Mm -hmm. uh, would you still elect the option? And the, the answer I repeatedly hear, Raquel, is yes. Yes. These are women who feel like they would like the opportunity to try it, to get in a position of marriage. And, you know, you heard Courtney and I going back and forth about this on the Acting Up podcast. She made, I don't know if they made the edit, but she asked the question, but well, who in the hell would want to be married if not for being mothers, because there are also black women who just want to be wives. They're not as, as, as excited or interested in the motherhood part of the journey. They want to be married. They want to be wives. And I think that it's time for us to acknowledge the reality that in this nation and almost globally, right, there is still social currency that comes with being someone's wife. It is. And while it might not be for me, Raquel, I don't even know your marital status. It's not really that relevant to the conversation, in my opinion, whether it's for me or you. The fact is there are black women that do want that, that do desire it. Now, if it doesn't work out in the end, Many of them would be devastated. Divorce is very hard. I can speak to that as well. But there are many of them that said, I would like the opportunity to get there, try it, experience it, and then make a decision as to whether I want to stay in that marriage or move forward. And they're very upset, brokenhearted, and devastated that they haven't even had that opportunity. Um, you said you don't know if I'm married. Ebony K. Williams does go on to say that she has friends and these friends would say that even if they knew the marriage would be bad and that they would have to pay child support, that they would still want the experience of being married. So they would give up uh, financial independence and all of that in an attempt to be married. So the question of would people care about the substance or would they care about just being married? For a lot of people, just being married to say they were married is enough. There is a very important question about why that is. Why it is that one would want to be married even though it would be bad for them financially and all in these other ways. Why they would still want it. Not that marriage is bad, but in the case that you already know that it's going to be bad, why would you still say you want the marriage that is going to be bad? Ebony K. Williams said some of her friends, when posed with that very question, said they would still want to be married, even though they know it would be bad and end poorly and they would end up having to pay child support. So I just women, by the way, I just wanted to put that out there. So it is not far-fetched to think about marriage in the context of just getting the ring. A lot of people just want to, quote unquote, get the ring. And that means they have accomplished something. This video is about light skin Keisha, not her individually, but a sort of archetype, right? Um, the, the idea of the, quote unquote, pick me does come up in this a lot and we will break it down using mahogany pink's video hopefully and as we go through these questions that come up hopefully we are also questioning ourselves and how we show up in the world not just as a pick me for women but men and just generally the idea of how we invest in an order to be chosen by an institution or an individual by putting other people down and trying to make ourselves look better. Because I think at bottom, that is what the idea of pick me is and why it is so insidious, dependent on putting other people down in order to make yourself look good. That is it. That is all. All right. So now that that's out of the way, I will say this as another preface. While we will be discussing light skin Keisha, I hope this is no hate. I have waited a long time to do this video, to release this video, to engage with this material because I did not want to add fuel to an already blazing fire uh, on social media around her, her fiance, her fiance's ex, and their child to come. This is not about their child or about any children. Please do not include any comment about children in the comment section. Please refrain from doing that. But as a test, this is an engagement on whether or not pygmyism 
is a good thing, uh, whether or not light skin Keisha could be categorized as a pick me in the archetype that will be created at some point today, again, using um, Mahogany Pink's video, and whether or not this is a good thing for the culture. Now, I won't repeat those questions. I do, however, want them to be floating somewhere in the back of your minds as we get into the background. So let's do it. Let's talk about what happened and why we are engaging in this kind of video. On September 5th, 2023, Light Skin Keisha took to her Instagram and posted videos from her maternity photo shoot with her fiance, Coco Van Gogh. Internet, for the most part, was happy for them. Everyone was sort of celebrating. And then Coco Van Gogh's ex and baby mother came out and said, yeah, no, not on my watch. <laughs> she said, absolutely. She... Not on my watch. Not on my watch. After Light Skin Keisha came out and announced that she was having a child with Coco Van Gogh, Coco's ex-girlfriend and the mother of his child came out on her Instagram and posted in her story, uh, it's been F him on my end. And that's why he's so mad that he can control me and tell me what to do, dot, dot. Dot. But what you're not going to do is keep playing in my child's face. Because we all know she got a mother that's not going to play about her. N-Word got a whole podcast but can't even communicate with his daughter. Crying, crying clown. Now, one could say that she is being vindictive. One could say the timing of this post is bad. One could actually say this seems hateful and maybe a direct attack on the announcement of a new child. What we don't know is how this announcement is affecting the mother, baby's mother, uh, mentally, and whether or not she has a right to speak publicly about her and her daughter's experience from her perspective, how they have experienced Coco Van Gogh. I don't know necessarily if it is our place to critique her for speaking out about someone who is deeply connected to her vis-a-vis -a, -vis a child. So I would not like something like this posted, but I don't critique her for posting it. If this is how she feels, this is how she feels. But should you be doing it publicly? Who knows? It seems odd that she would do something like that, but Coco Van Gogh, being the stand-up respectable man he is, decided to take screenshots from the daughter's conversation with him and post it to his social media for the world to see. And uh, let, let's read some of these uh, text messages. So <sighs> the daughter says, can we go bowling, I'm assuming, on Sunday? Because one of my friends have to go get their hair done today and I had to get their wrong, yeah, hair done Saturday. I mean, obviously this is a child. He goes, okay, did you clean up? Getting your food now. She says, the daughter, yes. Coco says, okay, and the bathroom clean? Daughter says, yes. Coco says, hey, come downstairs and get food. Daughter says, daddy, mommy said if you can send child support. <laughs> Coco says, why would I send her, I'm assuming, child support, and you with me. So I think he believes that if the child is with you for a couple of days, even a week, that you, 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 you're you not supposed to still <laughs> send child support to the mother. I The child is going back to the mother, I presume. So yes, you, it, it, it is a weird, <laughs> sorry. It is extraordinarily weird 
that this message is being posted. Like, if I am posting this, not to point out child support or anything like that, I would delete the child support section of this because it's not doing what I think Coco think it's doing, where it's, I have my child for a couple of days, a weekend, a week even, so I shouldn't be paying you child support. Yeah, yes, it still, it still is required for you to pay that child support. That you have the child doesn't mean you don't pay child support. So I am not quite sure what this is doing maybe he was trying to highlight that he does have a relationship with his daughter but we'll we'll get into this more but i because i, I want to get through he then also if you're critiquing me about reading the child's message if you're critiquing me about talking about the child and her father please note that i would never do something like this but for the father posting to the public text messages, private text messages between himself and his daughter to prove something to the public about his involvement in his daughter's life and to shame the mother about child support or the mother wanting child support when the daughter is with him for a couple of days. Like, this is bizarre. He then posts a picture of his daughter getting her hair done and put deadbeat, question mark, question mark, question mark. Again, why are you putting your child out there like this? He then goes on to post even more text messages. One where he says, okay, been traveling. I'll sell whenever I have a chance. Sorry about that. Um, then the child, I'm assuming this is the mother on the child's phone. Why did you, why you didn't send it yet? grammar it is what it is so coco says hey just settled down in new york just woke up payment was sent tell my daughter i love her had to send cash app zell acts weird when i'm traveling i sent a little extra for fees she said okay thanks right this was in march <laughs> And then he asked, deadbeat, huh? He then posts a picture, I'm assuming, of bowling and asks, deadbeat, huh? And then he goes on to say, so magically, every time something good happens for me, I become a deadbeat, huh? Then he posts a picture of his daughter again with a bunch of chains around her neck. Iced out, I guess the phrase is. The daughter is iced out, apparently. And he goes deadbeat, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. He then posts a picture of himself and his daughter hugging his leg um, and says, been with her since the day she got out hospital. All right. So all of that is going on on social media. But Coco Van Gogh goes live. And he goes live to explain himself. And I want you to see some of this. Again, this is all sort of backstory to get into the actual commentary. So this is what Coco Van Gogh had to say. Play that. I'm a, I'm, I don't play that. Stop saying shit about me and my mother kid. Anybody, my managers have called me. Your baby mama just called me cussy. I might make a video on Instagram. I might make a video on Instagram talking about society. My manager will get a phone call. Oh, your baby mama said you're talking about her. Baby girl, when nobody's speaking about you, never. We ain't never speaking about you, okay? I'm too busy getting money. You feel what I'm saying? And don't y'all ever, don't ever, 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 ever play them games with my fiance. Let me, that's a normal thing I'm going to play. I'm gonna, one more thing I'm going to say about y'all. One more thing I'm going to say about y'all. One more thing I'm going to say about y'all. One more thing I'm going to say about y'all. Don't ever play with my fiance about this money. I know what you're thinking. Same old, same old G word, uh, baby mama, baby daddy drama. Not exactly, because with fame comes a new level of scrutiny. And light skin Keisha decided that she was not going to let Coco handle his business, but rather that she would insert herself publicly into what is going on. Now, I must say this I don't know what's happening privately, and maybe there's mother, Kayla, uh, what's her name, Kaylin, 
Maybe she is dragging light-skinned Keisha behind the scenes, but if she's doing that, she's smart enough to not do it publicly because light-skinned Keisha hadn't done anything to her. And one would assume light-skinned Keisha, in my mind, would just step aside and let the man handle his baby mother, the child, and everything over there, away from her. Yeah, no, she did not. She decided that, like Summer Walker, and I did say like Summer Walker because we need to have a conversation. Like Summer Walker, she was going to insert herself and she was going to shame this woman speaking. And I actually want to know y'all's opinion on this down in the comment section. Should Light Skin Keisha have just let Coco Van Gogh deal with the mother of his child? And they stay over there and she kind of deals with this privately instead of publicly deciding to speak up. But this is what she had to say. And I think what she says is important. Again, still in the backstory section of this video. This is probably the longest section. So apologies. I don't even know. I told Coco, I said, I don't even know why you post some screenshots because that don't prove shit. I be getting on his ass because that don't prove nothing. But let's talk about it. Why you did this when we announced that I'm pregnant? Huh? Why you did this when, you when, when, when we announced that I'm pregnant? Because you're obsessed with me. You have an obsession. This ain't even about your child. You don't even make the things about your child. He's a Debbie. Hmm. Let's take it back. You say he hasn't seen her since March. Well, he does have the videos or whatever. She was with us in April. She was with us in April. That's a fact. Oh, but what happened in April? She was with us for two weeks or whatever, spring break, whatever. She was with us for that time period. And what happened? Mm, harassment. That's what happened. Harassment is what happened. <sighs> I hate to do this. I really don't want to. But when people play on my name, I don't like it. And when people play on my man name, I don't like it. Because at the end of the day, I'm a stand-up woman. I'm a stand-up woman. And so at the end of the day, I speak on facts. He did not block her. He blocked you because she has her. His daughter has his number. You use her. You use your daughter's phone to attack him and to be able to get in contact with him and cuss him out any chance that you get because you are bitter. That's what happens. What happened was is you threatened to call the police on us after we tried to make arrangements to drop her off to you. That's what happened. What happened was is that your your daughter was crying. Boohoo crying because she did not want to go home because she said her mama does too much and she's always mean and she cusses everybody out. That's what happened. Fucking us for years, this is what happens. I'm talking about we can go back to four, 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 four or five years ago where you have been stalking us, popping up on us. That's what happened. Debbie, I don't think a deadbeat is going to offer to take custody or joint custody even. I sat on the phone with you at one point in time. I sat on the phone with you and I tried to hear you out. But the only thing I could hear was you talking about us. You're not worried about the child. You're worried about us. Debbie. So you call him a deadbeat because he offered you to take custody? He offered you even joint custody because he said you needed to get your life together. Why do you need to get your life together? Because you don't have a home. You don't have a stable home for either of your children. So he said, I will take, I will make your life easier. She will be in great schooling. We'll make sure that she take care of everything. We'll take care of everything. We just need you. You just need to get yourself together. Cause we know that it's stressful. It might be stressful for you. You even cried on the phone and said that you agreed. But every time he talks about custody, you have a problem. We even said that it would be a smooth transition. We're not going, we're not going to hold her hostage from you. We're not going to do all of that because at the end of the day, a child needs their mama. Oh no. You want to call him a bitch ass, you know, when he offered to take custody, take, take the stress off of your hands. You want to threaten him. You want to talk about me. See, this it's, it's so much shit on the, on the, on the, on the end, on the back end that people don't even be knowing about. You're really, you're shot out. You're crazy. Putting out disrespectful statement about your fiance's baby mother 
is wild to me. That sentence is actually bizarre to make and say. So let's move on. You said you're a stand-up woman, which, fine, stand-up human being. It's weird then. Why would you be discussing another woman's experience of your baby father, right? Why would you be diminishing someone so publicly about who they are and what they have and what they can and cannot provide. So the the idea that you are defensive makes sense, that you're defensive publicly now, that is odd. Please note that your public defense, in the same way Summer Walker did, your public defense of him serves only to undermine any future claim you might have against him. While you might not care about this now, please note that your experience of your fiancé is not the ex-girlfriend and the mother of his child's experience of him, obviously. And so when someone is hearing out their grievance against someone you know like this, to publicly vouch for their reputation in their interaction with someone that you obviously don't fully know, it is bizarre. But no, when you hang your credibility along those lines, we get cases like Krishan Rock and Summer Walker, when they came out against the man they were dealing with after defending this man against claims that were very similar to the one they're now hurling at the father of their children or child, it looks weird. And people don't give the kind of sympathy that these women might deserve. I said might because I don't know their lives. So, you confirmed that this man did in fact block his daughter. Now, you say the block was used in an effort to prevent the baby mother from reaching out to him and cursing him out. But we didn't know why. She didn't say why. Kaylin that is her name, that's the Instagram handle, said that Coco blocked his daughter. And you confirmed that he did it. Now, you said he did it to block her from reaching him, but apparently he blocked his daughter. It is what it is. You said it, not me, right? Why are you putting the daughter's business out there again? Why are you taking up for the fiancé by using, weaponizing the child and what the child said to you in confidence, at least in private, why are you using that now publicly as a defense and, well, a shield for Coco and a sword towards the mother? Like, that doesn't make sense. Also, why does the living situation matter now so publicly? If you believe that you all are being altruistic in the way that you are helping her with her child, her being Kaylin with her child, why are you now using it to drag her? And the fact that you're saying playing with your name, no one has said your name publicly. <laughs> and that is important. So if if Kaylin, the mother of uh, Coco's child, is being a master manipulator behind the scenes and dragging you, she's smart enough to not do it publicly. So you dragging her publicly kind of make you look odd. Like, it, it looks odd. So let's be honest. Is the first baby mother upset? Probably. <laughs> she probably saw them thick pictures and videos you posted and was in her feelings and decided to post. Is that right? No. Was she being malicious with the timing of her post? Look, I don't know this woman, but I'm going to go ahead and say most likely. Now, that's my opinion. Should Keisha be mad? Absolutely. Does Keisha have the right to address this woman publicly? Look, you got the right to say and do whatever you want to say and do publicly, but note that when you make these public statements about who this person is in relation to someone else, if Coco is not that way to you, Keisha, and you ever come out and talk about how much of a deadbeat he is or anything like that, note that the kind of sympathy we probably should have for you might not be there. And that should not dissuade you from telling what you believe to be is the truth. Please tell the truth. 
but please make sure it is the truth. The way you experience your fiancé might not be the way that Kaylin ex ex experienced her baby father. Like, it might not be. And to be fair, it is none of your business. Hear me out, because the two becomes one in a marriage. Y'all are not married yet. And this woman is talking about her baby father and about a connection that they have that will serve probably for the rest of their life vis-a-vis -vis their child. I would advise, if you asked me for advice, but you didn't, but I would have advised to st sit this one out. Let him, actually, I would advise being at home, talking to him about your upset and let him handle it how he wants to handle it. But don't go public against this woman because it's not a good look. Is the baby mother bitter? We do not know. And to claim that she's bitter is reductive because, again, we don't know her experience. Let that man handle his business. Let that man talk. Let Coco Van Gogh engage publicly. Do not put your reputation and credibility, light skin Keisha, out there to protect this man, even if it is your fiance, because you don't know what is on the other end of this fiance ship, this marriage when it comes. You don't know what's going to happen. And I think you should protect yourself and your brand in particular. All right. At some point, Light Skin Keisha goes on to say, this lady, Kaylin, the mother of Coco's child, is a felon. Look, I I didn't even go look for the receipts because I'm not about to do that with, with, with Light Skin Keisha. So in the midst of all of this happening... Coco decided that he would go live again and speak about his baby mother. And I, I think we need to hurry up and get into the pick me section of this, this video. And the reason we should do that is listen to the way people speak to people they believe beneath them. That tells you a lot about who that person is or will become towards you when they feel they no longer need you. It is very important, I think, that we pay attention to the way the people around us treat people they no longer want or quote-unquote need. So this is what he had to say about his baby's mother, and I find this so disgusting. So let's watch. Yes, bitch, lame ass nigga. You don't want to do this, you buying your girl Birkins. Da -da 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 -da. Tell Keisha to pay your child support. Man, I don't need nobody to pay my child support. Why are you explaining yourself? But, because I'm going to clear my name. My name is all I got. My name is all I got. I'm not going to keep letting y'all play with me. Y'all been playing with me with this shit for two years, two, three years. Two or three years. You feel me? This ain't no new baby. My baby is 11 years old. My daughter is 11 years old. This ain't even my ex. This ain't even my ex. This is somebody from years ago. This is somebody from my daughter is 11 years old, bro. And I'm going to clear my name. I'm going to clear my name. Right now, my daughter cannot call my phone. You want to know why my daughter can't call my phone? Because every damn time I got them, she calling the police. She's talking about, I'm going to call the police on you because what you calling the police on me for? Because I'm tired and I fucked around. You didn't pick up, the, you didn't answer the door for your child? You call me all out my name. You bother me and I always be cool. I just be cool. I keep it moving. moving. She's so happy she on the shade room right now, my nigga. This shit making her motherfucking day. But I'm going to get on here and I'm going to goddamn clear my name. My daughter know I love her. My daughter done told me a million times that she want to live with me, bro. You know what she said? I said, I told my daughter, I said, hey, I want you to come live with me. She said, she need to grow up like you grew up. She need to live in the same neighborhood you grew up. Why, why would I want my daughter to grow up like me when I'm doing better now? You feel me? I'm doing better now. Why would I want my daughter? Why would I not want my daughter to live in a better neighborhood? I ask you, give me my daughter, man. Let her come live. Let me come live. You talking about, and then, and then y'all get on here talking so stupid. Like, that's why the internet is so stupid. Y'all talking about why you don't post her. For what? So it's still going to be a problem? I can't make this. this it's always going to be a problem, bro. She's sick because I got, my fiance is beautiful. My fiance is cool as hell. My fiance, when my daughter comes over, my fiance cooks her dinner. We just took her bowling a couple of months ago. I buy my little girl whatever she wants. She has her own room at my house when she come over with me, okay? She is catered to. Think about it. Y'all my fans on social media. I send y'all money every week. Why the fuck would I not send my daughter money? You feel me? I don't got to post my kid. I don't have to post my kid. What I got to post my kid for y'all folks for what? You feel me? Is she mad because of the, my fiance is gorgeous. My fiance is successful. My fiance is a good person and I'm a good person. You know what I'm saying? And then it's another thing, y'all. 
Y'all ain't in my shoes. I'm not trying to talk down on nobody in here. You feel me? I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to talk down on any of y'all, but y'all don't know my pain. But let me tell y'all something, bro. Y'all always talk about go to the courts. The courts don't give a fuck. The courts don't give a fuck. As long as the female has a roof over their head, the, the man, we always gonna be the bad guy. I spent, bro, you know, y'all ain't got the money. Man, bro, you spend so much money on that shit and still don't get custody of your kid, my nigga. You feel me? I, bro, I'm good, bro. I'm good to my kid. I'm good to my sister. I'm good to my mama. I'm a good person. That's how I, I love women, bro. I take care of my women, bro. I take care of every woman in my life. The courts don't give a fuck. I'm gonna let y'all know that right now. I done been to court for this shit. I went to court for two years, bro, for that shit. I didn't complain one time on the internet. You wanna know why? Because y'all would have been making me look stupid as fuck. If I would have got online and been like, oh my god, oh my god, man, I had to see my daughter. Y'all would clown the shit out of me. Y'all would clown the shit out of me. Them courts don't give a fuck. I went to court. I told the lady. Huh? She she had a kid with a whole nother person. The person DMing me talking about he threatening my life and threatening my mama life. But guess what? They like, well, that's he say, she say, sir. Well, that's he say, she say, sir. Well, let's get down to the problem, sir. You, you did that. You didn't. They trying to pull my records. Hey, I work for my money. What I do with my money is my motherfucking business. As long as I send you your money, get out. Don't worry about me, bro. Don't count my pockets. Don't count my pockets. You feel me? Ain't no point in you count my pockets, bro. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in beautiful. I'm in beautiful parts somewhere. I'm in place right now. It's my girl's birthday. And the only reason she did that is because she sees that my fiance and I are having a kid and everything is going to go right. That's why. That's why. She sees us enjoying our life and she do this every single It don't matter what. It don't matter what. I got engaged. What the fuck do me getting engaged got to do with you? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, at the end of the day, bro, I got to address it and clear my name because at the end of the day, bro, that's cap, bro. That's cap, bro. All that's cap. I, like, all that's cap, bro. No matter what I do, it's going to be a problem, bro. No matter what I do. That's why Keisha said what she said. She's trying to let y'all know, no matter what happens, what you mean what they got to do with nothing? How you a felon and your life ain't together, but you got time to be on the internet when you supposed to be somebody's mama. Stop stop being in the comments and being slow because I'm a smart motherfucker. I didn't get here by being dumb. You see what I'm saying? I'm a very smart nigga. I'm a very, very smart nigga. I didn't get here by being a dumb ass nigga. Listen to what I'm saying. Keisha said she's a felon because she's drama as fuck. You, you get what I'm saying? She's drama as fuck. You feel what I'm saying? If you go to her Instagram, ain't no businesses over there. Ain't no working over there. It's drama. She want to post about me. That's her claim to pay. It ain't nothing else you going to get on there. You ain't on the shade room for nothing else. You on the shade room because you talking about coca. You see what I'm saying? I ain't no dumb nigga, man. Never been a dumb nigga, man. You feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? My daughter, I can show y'all pictures. My daughter done been in every car I've been in. She got a picture with every car that I've been in. My daughter know what the fuck going on. Keisha, come get your man. <laughs> come get... That that's what's causing all the rockers like Go let this man talking Y'all really out anywho, let, let's go. So Kaylin, the, the the baby mother, by the way, if Kaylin is not her name, that's her handle. That's why I'm calling her Kaylin. She goes, How dare you? This po those pictures from when she was with you this past spring break, as if you are consistent. That was the last time she saw you before you blocked her. Post up some pictures from her fifth grade graduation. Post some pictures from her first day of middle school. Post up some pictures from birthday party when she was being celebrated by you. <clears throat> what is her teacher's name? H. What is her favorite color? I'll wait. She then goes on and says, y'all keep speaking on things outside of our daughter, and that should be the topic, not my personal life and the false narrative y'all pulling out. If I'm a felon, why can't you get your daughter? If I'm a convicted felon, please post those receipts. Again, I'll wait. But to speak on anything criminal is crazy when you both locked up for violent, for violent behavior numerous times. Not to mention, one was for you putting your hands on me, right? Like, if this is true, by the way, like, all right, girl. So then Kaylin goes on to say, baby mother number two, no one addressed you, true. But before you are a mother, you are a woman first. You've been around when me and him were a couple because you were smashing his brother. <laughs> Just enjoy your pregnancy, love. Okay, girl. Laskin Keisha actually did confirm that she's been around him when he was cheating on other women. It's on a podcast. At the pick-me stage of this video, we'll pull that up. I don't feel like putting it here, but she does confirm some of this. And 
Kaylin, the mother of Coca's child, is correct. Like, nothing y'all are talking about addresses the point that she brought up about you being a deadbeat. Her being a convicted felon and all of that is absolutely irrelevant, if true, right? Now, Keisha comes back and says, I got the ring, no, no, no. Like, he picked me, he picked me, I got the ring, I got the ring. And for the life of me, I don't know why she did this. Like, I don't know why she did this. She got chosen, and so she wanted the world to know. Let me play this. Let, let, let's play. Brit, we are having a ball. Oh, this ain't gonna ruin my moment, because I know the truth. But we're not even gonna give no bitches no But listen, this, is not, this ain't gonna ruin my moment, but that's all I'm saying. It's at the end of the day, people not finna create no fake narratives, especially a felon age. A bitch who's a felon. I'm not even finna go back and forth. So at the end of the day, because we can we can lay out the truth. We can lay out the truth. We can lay out the truth. Also, too, I just want to address this too. Coco Mango's not my boyfriend. That is my fiance. <laughs> so you bitches out here who be with, who be praying on the bitch on the bitch downfall. Let me tell you something. Maybe I have the ring. Been at the ring, and we're planning our wedding for next year, next summer, to be exact. Okay. So please stay tuned because. Okay. <laughs> No, I'm not off because ain't nobody finna can, listen. I can do like that's what I'm saying. Y'all don't know what's going on. So at the end of the day, that's just what that is. Lay out the truth then. Lay out the truth. Look, joke aside, the idea that it's not your boyfriend, it's the fiance. Girl, what's the legal protection? What is the difference between a boyfriend and a fiance all right girl period that you have the ring is what you're flexing on other people but who is the man though who it is important the, the man you the man that gives you the ring is important the kind of marriage you're getting into is important she becomes a part of your family that that's the the mother of his child regardless of if you want it look even in common law i know what y'all are gonna say oh engagement means something even at common law engagement don't mean nothing so even if if you are a boyfriend and girlfriend living together for enough years presenting as a married couple you might have more protection at common law than if you're fiance so no, we're not gonna go back and forth. But go off, sis. <laughs> go off. You got the ring. Does that make you a better woman? For real. Like obviously, I don't think Light Skin Keisha is gonna see this video. And even if she does see this video, I don't think she would ever respond to it. But does it make you a better woman because you have the ring? Or did you get the ring because you are a better woman? Because I think this is important, and I do think the way that um, women, I know men will pit women against each other around a wedding and a ring because it's to their benefit that women are tackling each other, trying to get a ring, right? In an attempt to protect our ego, I think a lot of the times we find ourselves battling for people and entering battles that have nothing to do with us. This is true for a lot of people and with a lot of relationships, be they plutonic or otherwise. We tend to get caught up in other people's battles a lot of the time to show that we are dedicated to these people who might not deserve that kind of dedication. And even if they do, a lot of the times it's best to hold our cards closer to our chest as opposed to go full-fledged on the internet where whatever you do is recorded for the world to remember if you ever need to go against that person. A smart thing to do, I believe, is to figure out when the fight is not yours and divest from things that do not concern you. And I do mean do not concern you. I don't believe a mother talking about the the father of her child should concern the fiancé unless you guys are talking privately. It can concern you, it just shouldn't be concerning you publicly. We should know. To be clear, again, I believe 
light skinned Keisha can be mad about what that lady said about her fiance, due particularly to the timing. When Keisha announced her pregnancy, that's when the baby, the mother of his child came forward. But that is when you tell your fiance to go and handle his business respectfully. Because how he handles her should tell you something about how he treats people that he disagrees with. You can even question him, I believe, regarding who he decided to date previously. But you do not have the public support when you attack the mother of his first child before you're even married by saying you got the ring. Mm, the ring don't belong to you. <laughs> to pretend we do not know that men move on from their past families to their new family and stop engaging in a lot of ways with their previous children when they start a new family, and particularly when they have a new child, is ridiculous. The stat is clear. Like, the stats here are clear. We need to be teaching men not to ignore their children the minute a new woman shows up. And even if we just want to focus on improving the outcomes for single mother households, then we need to talk about what causes them, which is absentee fathers. Because absentee fathers are a huge problem. Anywhere between a fifth and a quarter of all fathers have no contact with any of their children. And this is often framed as, oh, my baby mother or my B of an ex-wife doesn't let me see the kids. But that's also not true, because when we look only at men with high levels of custody, 40%, almost half of those who start out with weekly contact, virtually abandon their children within eight years, having little to no contact. And studies have looked into the risk factors for father abandonment and found that once again, top of the list is fathers who have a new partner. And if they have a child with that new partner, then virtually all of them abandon their previous children. So if we really care about improving childhood outcomes, then we need to stop talking about single mothers and instead talk about the disgusting attitudes and behaviors in fathers that treat their children as disposable. No matter how much you love this man and how you really, really want to defend him, this is not your fight. Light-skinned Keisha, and for all, most women who are marrying a man with a child, it is not your fight, and the reason it is not your fight is because, well, you are not experiencing him as a father, and you most certainly currently aren't experiencing him as an ex. That is important. So this is one of the times where I believe it would be best to li listen, watch what is happening, and judge the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life. Well, let's be real. It's not going to be left of your life because you're getting married. Um, but I think this is important. And we are going to get into the pick me section in a bit. But before we do that, I, I just also want to add as a reminder that Light Skin Keisha does talk about how she is, quote unquote, team girl. And I'm not sure what she thinks being team girl, quote unquote, means, but she says it. Guess what? I will never be in a situation like that because guess what? My mama raised me way better than what the fuck is going on. So at the end of the day, that's that. Period. At the end of the day, that's that. I don't pray on bitches downfall. But what I will say is that people need to grow up and people need to stop lying. I could go on and on and on. I can go hours about how this girl has harassed us, has harassed people that we are around, has literally stalked us, has showed up to our places of residence. <laughs> unannounced literally i can talk about how she has threatened him threatened his mother called his mother out of her name um again child protective services has called him talking about they're going to do an investigation on her um help the child has even spoke about how she is a toxic woman and she literally cries it hurts my heart to see her cry when she don't want to leave she because she don't want to leave our house and she don't want to go back home she don't want to go back over there like i hate to see that because it's like literally like i said before she has no to be here they be so innocent they just be wanting to just you know what i'm saying have a happy little cool little life like that's it we have offered for full custody. We have literally told her, like, we can take, we'll take full custody. We'll buy full custody. We'll do joint custody if that works for you. Even if we do joint custody, full custody, whatever the simple, the simple whatever the situation is, like, we will literally help you so that you can get your life in tra on track. We will literally help you so that you can get your life on track. Because being a, mo uh, being a mother of multiple ch kids, it could be hard. I literally said that to her and she started to crying. So that's my thing. Like, at the end of the day, and you know what I'm saying? You feel like, you know what I'm saying? You're not in a relationship with either one of your baby fathers. So I get it. I'm not doubting that. So that's why we literally came to her, literally trying to figure out resolutions to make it easier for her. Unfortunately, she does not, in this situation, she does not want the best for her child. 
our lawyers, the attorneys and everything have paperwork and proof of how she has threatened us, how she has talked literally like everything. Like it's so much how she has made ridiculous comments, like dating back to probably years ago, she has made comments about us. Like, but it's unfortunate that the real, the reality of the situation is that she painted as if this is what she wants for her child. But in reality, I only go by action. I don't go off of words. I go off of action. So if you really wanted this for your child, then why are you not letting your child live a better life? Why you get yourself together? We're not saying that, oh, we're not going to give her back to you or we're going to hold her from you and all this other stuff or whatever. We're not going to bash you in front of her. We would never do that. We would have the utmost respect for you while you get yourself together. I'm not mad at no one. I'm just not going to let nobody play on my name. I'm not going to let nobody play on... This is a household here. I'm not going to let nobody play on our household. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Y'all be mad when people address shit. Y'all be mad when people respond and, and don't let people just, like, you're not going to keep on, you, what? like, y'all crazy as hell. Like, don't get it misconstrued. We still peaceful over here. After this, I'm going to go have salmon and grits because the baby hungry. The baby hungry. My notes. That is the mother of his child. You can say it's your fiancé all you want, but that is the mother of his child. They have a child together. And when you say things like, we are taking care of your child, the kind of removal of his fatherhood is very strange in that sentence, but video is already too long. I can't get into that. And and the implication of just the wording, it could just be a slip-up. So why analyze that? Um, The idea that you are addressing this publicly when no one addressed you publicly and you say, stop playing on your name, light skin Keisha. No one brought your name into it. Now, if she's doing something behind the scenes, that's terrible. And y'all should deal with that, particularly him. But you coming out publicly look odd. And that's why everyone was in the comments saying, this is weird. Why are you the one addressing it? Why are you putting that young lady's thoughts and statements, the the child, out there like that? Like, why are you doing this? And the the thing that I find particularly interesting is like, she's like, it's a household, I'm at peace, I'm defending him. Well, she's the same lady that, I hate, (laughs) I hate doing this, but I'm going to do it. She's the same lady that came out and said that she was with him while he was cheating on other women. She was friends with him and she was there when he was cheating on other women, with cheating with other women. If this was one of the women she was che- he was cheating on, then obviously she's going to have problems with you and him. And I'm not saying it's right, But can you imagine, like, you and the guy are together. The guy has this girlfriend who is always around. You find out that this guy has been cheating on you. She's on a podcast, Light Skin Keisha, talking about how she was there when he was cheating on all these women. And she is glad he got it all out of his system because she's not going, oh, you don't believe me. Let's play that. Let's play that. Because the fact that this woman could be upset and everyone, anyone is like, how could she be upset? She's bitter, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, even if she's bitter, like, you said some wild things. So let's play that. I had, I was in a relationship with a girl, right? And she was the main, of course. But then, like, when she started really bothering me and it's started like, okay, cool, the other girl, I make them feel like they were my girl, too. But you were dating. What? I, was, I was with, but I had a main, though. So you had a bitch. I had a bitch. I mean, I definitely was there. I was there. When you cheated on all the bitches, like, okay, then I'm glad you got it out because I ain't going. <laughs> I'm not going. Period. You, so, so, you so, would. I'm sorry if there was an echo, but yeah, so you confess to being around. You, first of all, right before they went back and forth about him cheating with other women, you. Light skin Keisha was literally saying, no, you don't cheat. No, you don't do this. No, you don't do that. And the guy's like, yes, I do. You were there. She was like, yeah, I was there when you cheated. Why were you then saying he didn't do it? And this is the problem with hearing light skin Keisha go public after the mother of his child. The problem is we've heard you deny his reality to the tune of saying he didn't do something that you were there for him 
while he was doing. Like you were like, no, you don't even like women like that. And I was like, no. He literally said, I make women feel like they're my main, that they're the only or whatever. And I cheat on them. And you were there. And then finally, after he told you like, yep, I did this. I did this. Stop saying I didn't do it. I do it. You then say, oh, yeah, I was there for all of it. Thank God you got it all out of your system. That's what you said. So I'm sorry if the public, after seeing that, do not find you credible in how you explain the, who this man is. Because you seem to be denying even his reality when he tells you his reality. That's the problem. Like, even the comment about never knowing there were a couple. Let me play this quick. Like this is this is kind of ridiculous. Since I've known y'all, I've known that you couple talking about when y'all was a couple. I ain't never known y'all to be no real fucking couple ever. Ever since I've known y'all, I've known that you are crazy though. I know that you've been crazy though. As far as nine to ten years back, I know that you've been crazy. That's what I do know. I know that you're sick in the fucking head. That's what I do know. I know that you're miserable. That's what I do know. You don't even stay with you. Couple. Talking about when y'all was a couple. I ain't never known y'all to be no real fucking couple ever. Ever since I've known y'all. I've known that you are crazy, though. I know that you've been crazy, though. I don't usually do this, but there's evidence to suggest it so I can. If she is, quote unquote, crazy, who made her that way? And we're going to stick at the point where you said, light skin Keisha said, you all were never a couple. And I don't know why she would say that after it was very clear you have an that they were a couple, right? So let me, and by clear that they were a couple, I mean that Coco Van Gogh in his podcast with light skin Keisha admits, and I will play this at some point, he admits that he made, oh, I already did play this. He already he admits that he makes women feel like they are together and that they are the main. So after a man confess that, it's weird to then be mad at the woman for believing that they were a couple. He literally said he makes them believe they are a couple. So, of course, they would believe they are a couple. She's not wrong because he made them believe, he made her believe that. And you can't say he didn't make her specifically believe that because you don't know. He was telling you and you were denying it. So I'm sorry if I don't appreciate your recollection or your understanding of what is happening because you kept denying his reality. So you don't know them to be a couple, a real couple, but some kind of couple, but not a real one. It doesn't matter because, again... He said he made the women he was dating or talking to or sleeping with feel like they were in a relationship. So, yeah, she can claim they were a couple because that's what he told her. Now, I don't know why you are opposed to that being a reality. They literally have a child. They literally have a child. And I'm going to play where he confessed because maybe she forgot. So let me play where they forgot which he literally says, um, but I'm saying I had, I was where he said, I make them feel like they're the main. Let, let's play that because I don't want light skin Keisha to forget this because forgetting this might be part of the problem. Shit with a girl, right? And she was the main, for, of course. But then, like, when she started really bothering me and it's started like, okay, cool, the other girls, I make them feel like they were my girl too. But you were dating. What? I, was, I was with, but I had a main though. So you had a bitch. I had a bitch. I mean, I definitely was there. I was there when you cheated on all the bitches. Like, okay, then. I'm glad you got it out because I ain't going. <laughs> you know, this man has trash ways, and to sit there and pretend like you don't know his ways is ridiculous after you said, but I ain't going though. I'm glad you got that out. I was there when you were cheating on all these women. You treated these women like crap. And now I'm glad you got that out of the, the way. And now you're up here talking about, oh, I'm at peace. Like, of course you're not at peace. His past is catching up to him. 
people are upset. This woman that he has a child with is probably upset about some of the experience, and maybe she's not do it, putting it out there in the best way, but for you to sit there and say she's a stalker, she's crazy, blah, 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 for you to be attacking her this publicly feels weird when you have publicly confessed to how poorly he treated women while you were there. Like, what do you mean? And that's why I say that it's not credible to hear her talk about this. And she should know this. You were there when he was cheating on these women and lying to them, in his own words, quote, making them feel like they were the main. Look, let me say, I hope this ends well for you. I don't believe things like situations like this end well for people who engage in this way. And it's because I believe in the universal law that is karma, but maybe it's not real. And I hope it's not real for your sake. But let's continue. This dude does not, does not even seem to care. He just confesses it outwardly. Let me play this for, for you. <laughs> A again, this is what Light Skin Keisha says. And the laughing at people and women who've been through pain or is expressing some kind of pain after listening to this man talk is really odd. It is messed up. It is messed up. And if there is karma, I don't think this ends well for her. Now, he is the problematic one, of most problematic to me of all of them. She's just a bystander, but who kind of co-signed and was complicit in the behavior, but he's the one who engaged in the behavior. So if karma is real, girl, that's on him. But watch what Light Skin Keisha does in this video, and then we'll move on now to the pick me section after this. Ha! We are team girl. Somebody said you're a mother now. So better be careful. You can be in the same situation with y'all. Look, kids don't deserve the drama. Absolutely. And guess what? I would never be in a situation like that because guess what? My mama raised me way better than what the fuck is going on. So at the end of the day, that's that. Period. At the end of the day, that's that. I don't pray on bitches downfall. But what I will say. We are team girl. And I can never be in the situation she's in because my mother raised me better than that. I would have a bunch of follow-up questions like, what do you think the situation that she is in is? <laughs> and why do you believe that it's somehow based on how you were raised that you could be placed in that situation? Those are important questions. And those are the questions that lead us into the pick me section of this video. Please note, I'm using the word pick me theoretically as a sort of archetype, and I'm not calling an individual a pick me, but I am framing the conversation around light skin Keisha so I can understand why someone would think that I'm being disparaging. I am not trying to be disparaging, Certainly. but this is important. So let's get to Mahogany Pink to introduce us to the pick me section of this video. The graveyard is filled with women who've done all of these things and died very unhappy with that arrangement, whether you want to believe it or not. While the pick-me's devotion to denigrating the modern black woman for the entertainment of black men may seem to come from an intense love or desire for black men on the surface, underneath the cape of pro-black love is a grave desire to cover up misery, desperation, and insecurity. And the methods that the pick-me should use to fulfill that grave desire can often further aid in the oppression of other black women. In the mind of the pick-me, she simply has a difference of opinion. But even in the face of logic and reason, the pick me clings tighter to her internal misogyny with one arm while frantically taking swings at black women with the other. In the black women's liberation movement, the pick Misha is the Uncle Tom. But what makes her so intolerable is that she is a walking fraud. Her behavior is inauthentic, unsustainable, and blind to black women's real experiences with black men. Her rhetoric is a manipulation, a glamour, an appeal to her own vanity. Look at me, aren't I perfect? And much of her advice 
advice for how to interact with men will not help you form a real and lasting connection with them, but rather to develop a sociotropic personality of extreme people pleasing that often causes anxiety and codependency as you fight to keep up with some half baked idea of what actually makes a woman feminine. If you have not seen Mahogany Pink's video on the plight of the pick me, you will need to. That is a mu that is an absolute must see. That is one of the best drag ever on YouTube. Period. An intellectual drag. I'm probably it's linked. It's linked down there. If it's not currently linked there because uh, it should, I will link it there. Like it is down there in the the description. Anywho, so the pick me idea is very important. And the reason I brought this up when it comes to light skin Keisha is, you will see in a minute, when light skin Keisha says it could never be me, the mother of Coca's child could never be her. If in fact Coca is being a terrible parent, if in fact, then what she has done is taken accountability away from the person who did the bad action and place it at, at the feet of the victim, in this case, the mother of his child. And this is where we start the idea of Pikmisha. Now, again, I will play the portion where she said that could never be me because my mom raised me better than that. Um, it might sound good to say, but I promise you that is not where you want to be, particularly if we can accept that by, he did something wrong. <laughs> we are team girl. Somebody said you're a mother now, so better be careful. You can be in the same situation with y'all. Look, kids don't deserve the drama. Absolutely. And guess what? I would never be in a situation like that because guess what? My mama raised me way better than what the fuck is going on. So at the end of the day, that's that. Period. At the end of the day, that's that. I don't pray on bitches' downfall. But what I will say is that people need to grow up and people need to stop lying. People need to grow up and people need to stop lying. And that's just that on that. I'm not a felon. I've got a clean record. I'm just saying. I'm not... I'm not driving my... <laughs> listen. I can... Listen. I can do like... That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't know what's going on. So at the end of the day, that's just what that is. We're happy. In other words, I am better than her. Pick me, or more affectionately known in Blackistan as the Pikmisha, is a black woman who goes out of her way to get the approval and attention of black men, even if, or especially when, she can throw other black women under the bus to acquire said approval or attention. The Pikmi's core principle is to defend the position of black men as the de facto rulers over black women, with little regard for its logic and even less regard for the harm it causes black women. Again, short and sweet, hopefully, for Mahogany pink but we are going to move on quickly again a video is too long the idea that the pick me is the person who puts other women down in order to elevate themselves and defend men at any cost is hopefully seeming familiar because even after sitting down with her fiance for a podcast where the fiance explains how he cheats on women, how he not only cheats on them, but he makes women believe that they are the main one, that they are the one. Life Skin Keisha was out here saying, I don't believe that he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that until finally she had to admit that, yeah, you do it. So thankfully you got it all out of your system. Let's hope for her sake that he did in fact get it all out of his system because apparently that's how cheating works. If you do it enough times, then you get tired of it and then you don't do it anymore. Apart, look, I don't make the rules apart. Light that's, skin. That's, that's be I think that's what light skin Keisha thinks happens that if if men are cheating, then after a while they get married and then they'll stop because they quote unquote got it out of, out of their system. Not that fidelity is a muscle that you need to train and then you become faithful in a marriage because of years of practicing being faithful. No, 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 no. You need years of cheating and then when you get it out of your system, then you become magically faithful. So let's see a light skin Keisha um, talk about 
what it means to be a woman in her mind. And I don't know what it means to be a woman. I am a man, a fruitcake, but a man nonetheless. So let's hear what she has to say. A well-rounded woman. Yeah, hold that's that shit being down. a wife. That's being like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to have your nigga back. Why don't y'all have y'all nigga back? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In that, if you put it in, the, in that type of perspective. And then also, too, at the end of the day, I just feel like you don't, you want to have something to call your own as well, too. For sure. You, me, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm a strong I'm a strong woman. I feel like I'm a strong woman, but at the same time, like, can't nobody tell me that I'm, can't nobody come up in my motherfucking house and tell me to get the fuck out. Yeah, you're right. Because I'm handling shit too. Yeah. And that's just that on that. She does carry her weight. I carry my weight too. So it's like, at the end of the day, like, even if, okay, even if he's paying the rent and you just taking care of, he's paying the rent of the mortgage and you just taking care of, you know, the water bill, the utilities grocery. or whatever the case may be. These girls don't even want to do that. And then they want to sit there and say, no, nah, because a woman's duty is supposed to cook, clean, and fuck this up. Let's just be real. You Girl. bitches don't know. Hold on, wait a minute. Because you bitches don't know how to cook. Let's just be real. Yeah. You bitches, are you really taking the time to really learn how to cook for real? Are you really actually cooking every time your man comes home? Because and, and do he actually like your cooking or is it nasty as fuck? Is that why he's over here at Erica House every fucking Sunday for Sunday dinner? Or he going out with his boys or whatever to make a reservation and shit? What you mean? And then you want to say, oh, well, yeah, I clean. You bitches be dirty. Let's just be real. Y'all don't be getting the back of the toilets like y'all should be. Y'all ain't on y'all hands and knees scrubbing the ground cleaning them baseboards like y'all should be. Yeah, you can you can go hire a housekeeper and shit, but do you know what if the housekeeper not available? Do you know how to keep your house clean in between when the housekeeper's not there? No, nah, they don't. Who the fuck want to come to her, go home to a dirty house? Right. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. You know, uh, yeah. and then let's not even get on the part of having sex and all of that because bitches be out of it. Is your pussy even that good? Do you even know how to suck dick good? Can you make a nigga come off a second dick, bitch? Mm. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, though. Because they be bragging like they got it all. And it's like, okay, if you do got it all, okay. But is that really the... She don't got it all Is that you. the reality of the situation? You ain't got no man, though. But you ain't got no man. Like, exactly. It, like, the 50-50 thing, well, my, I mean, like, with the 50-50 thing, 50 /50 thing with me is like, you know, before we start dating, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I had that argument with somebody. And I was just like, I got money, though. You the one that ain't got no money. You feel? Yeah, have your so own. So you telling me I'm supposed to pay the rent, the lights, key gas in your car and my car, take you out to eat, let you come with me everywhere, and I'm the one with the money. You ain't got no money. Hell no. That ain't how we how this gonna work. Now, 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 if, now this is the only thing I say about men. Now, my 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 players, my players. I'm gonna be real with y'all. If this your crib, if this your crib, now. Pay your shit. Don't move no girl in your crib and make her pay no bills. I agree. You feel me? Like, when me and Keisha first start dating, when she moved in my crib, she don't know what the rent was. She probably don't remember what the rent or office or nothing, because that was my crib. I moved her in my crib. I got this. Yeah, you so we, let's be clear. If a man is moving you in his shit, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, let him pay his own bills. But now, if y'all decide to, to do this together, meaning he can't have no females at the house, he got y'all. You gonna be somewhat involved in the decorating. You're gonna be involved. With, you're gonna be having your friends at the crib, baby girl. You finna come up out that chocho. -cho. Hey, great, uh, great gowns, beautiful gowns. You finna come up out that money, R.I.P. School. You finna come up out that money for real, cause I ain't finna let you. Be, and me, I'm not dealing with no one who girl who ain't got no on. Now, if you go hit rock bottom, like if Keisha, but God forbid, not gonna if Keisha was to hit rock bottom, I got it. I got it. You feel me? I would make sure everything good and she gonna still continue to live the life that she was living before she before. But but I also think that it's it needs to be the other way around too though. They're mis absolutely it needs to be the other way around. And there if you're in a relationship for it to be temporary, I just feel like that's a waste of time, anyways. I feel like relationships are usually, you know, are happening because it's it, it's supposed to be for longevity, you know? To you, yeah. What do you mean? Who gets in a relationship for, for temporary pur purposes? The, the man is telling you and you don't want to listen. So who can't listen will learn. So 
you should be able to do 50-50. You should be able to pay your own bill. If he moves you into his crib, then he pays the everything. But if you move him into yours, I guess y'all pay half. If y'all both move together into a separate, don't know how that really works. But you should be able to take care of him. You should be able to take care of yourself. Um, you B words don't know how to cook. Y'all B words don't know how to clean. Can you go on your knees and scrub the floor? Is your you know what good? Can you give this good? Can you do that? Wait, what does he do? Because <laughs> at the point where you're saying you should be able to hold your own financially and then have all these criterias to be met, it seems like you're just doing a lot. It seems like the performance on your part is a lot. The failure of the man is on the woman in this way. And so it is your responsibility to quote unquote keep a man. He very overtly says that's why some of these B words don't have a man as if having a man is a prize. And so you not having it is that you can't do all the things Keisha listed, and so you're at fault for not being able to keep these men who will leave because Keisha gives them an out, says it's because of your lack of intimacy in very specific ways that leads him to go out there and cheat. Look, this part of the video is too easy. It's too easy because when you say the word pick me, just take that clip, put it there, and put it out, and it feels like you've defined it. It does. I'm not calling her a pick me, but that segment right there about just how important it is for women to have meet all these things, and they're not real women if they don't meet all these things. So just something very specific about what light skin Keisha believes about women. And that to be added to the idea that Coca Van Gogh admits again to cheating on women while light skin Keisha sits there and pretends that she didn't know he was doing this. Same relationship relationship like and dating. Let me let, let, let's go back. Let's go back some so y'all can hear how this conversation the previous conversation started. It's the same to me. No, I don't think that's the same. What's the difference? Dating is like, okay, you can go date five, you can go date multiple people and ain't nobody, you really have to answer to nobody. A relationship though is saying, hey, you are mine, I am yours. This is not, we're not, we're not going outside of this relationship. We're not going outside of this right here, what we got going on. We together. I'm in a relationship with him. You sure refuse to say it? We together. You know what I'm saying? But you could be in a relationship with five bitches. If I wasn't with you, I'd have a relationship with like 10 girls. No, you wouldn't. I swear to God. No, you wouldn't. Before I, I was you. before I was with you, before I was with you, I had relationships with four or five girls before. No, you no, you wouldn't. Yes, I did. He be capped. He's I'm not, not capped. I'm just being real. He don't even he don't even like, so it was annoying. He despised bitches. Bitches like, do he, get on my nerves. Bitches do like, get on my ah, nerves. Like, bitches he, get on my nerves. But I'm saying I had I was in a relationship with a girl, right? And she was the main for of course. But then like when she started really bothering me and then started like, okay, cool, the other girls, I make them feel like they were my girl too. But you were dating. What? I was I was with, but I had a main though. So you had a bitch. I had a bitch. I mean, I definitely was there. I was there when you cheated on all them bitches. Like, okay, then I'm glad you got it out because I ain't going. <laughs> you cannot sit there and laugh at the fact that you, your fiance cheated on other girls, but now you aren't going, and so you are happy that they he got it out of his system while also saying quote i am team girl in a separate video when it's convenient to you i'm just because gonna, that's that look i'm just gonna play the i am team girl bit again because it, it, it seems so odd that you would say something like this you're not team girl there's no reason to say you're team girl but let me let me play I'm Team Girl, just the song by it and then and We Team Girl. We are Team Girl. Someone will say, and 
rightfully so. Maybe she was saying we're team girl as in we're hoping that the baby is a, a girl. But she said on her podcast that she is pro-women. So even if even if this doesn't mean I'm team girl, like I'm for the girls, um, and it's rather I want my child to be a, a girl, then that's fine. But she's also said overtly that she, in fact, is pro-women, which I don't know what that means. So you can understand then why the mother of Coco Van Gogh's children or child would be upset with Keisha or have some animosity towards her if she was around while he was cheating on her, the baby mother, that is. Are you team girl? There is a segment that I wanted to include where Coco Van Gogh um, really engages with Keisha and says, I wouldn't leave you because your is so fire. And that is the kind of validation that feeds into the ego of the archetype that is a pick me where they're like, yes, I am winning. I won't play that part because it doesn't matter. She also goes on to say, I got the ring. And this ring is from a man with a baby mother who is being messy in your mind. A man that is being accused of not caring about his children. Yet, somehow, light-skinned Keisha believes herself to be the exception. He literally says, I make them feel like they are the one. I cheated on these women. You were up there denying his reality to the point where he has to be forceful in telling you that he is not a good person. Literally telling you he's not a good person. The idea that I am not like other girls and therefore I should be treated well. Is a girl who goes out. And I should be treated well and I should be treated different is important. A pick me girl is a girl who goes out of their way to impress boys and make them seem that they're not like other girls, aka an analog, if you've heard that term. Kind of like a simp, but for girls otherwise known as internalized misogyny. Not the easiest to explain, but when you see one, you'll know she's one for sure. Usually does this to be accepted by boys and be considered one of the good ones. If you say one of these things, congratulations, nobody likes you. <laughs> Straight from the Urban Dictionary. So now that we got the pick me portion out of the way, I apologize for moving on like that. I think it is important to learn from other people. And so this section, I'll call it Learn From Other People. Summer Walker um, did the same thing or a similar thing with her baby daddy. And I think one of the best videos that I've seen on this, uh, Krishan Walk also did it, but I, I, I don't care enough to include Krishan. Um, and this idea that you are going back and forth with people is kind of ridiculous, particularly when you are not the one who should be out here speaking like this. So let me play ya part of Yana's video. I hope she's okay with this. Um, part of Yana's video um, addressing Summer Walker and why it was such a weird thing for her to have come out the way that she did. So I'll play Yanni's video, part of it, and then we'll come back. Child support, you would think a person would get a clue. So I don't feel bad for Summer Walker, and I feel like she needs to start taking some ownership and accountability for her actions because that is how she got in this situation to begin with. And Summer ended up responding, but this is what she said. She said, here comes a cloud chaser. Who was even talking to you? You don't even have your kid. So why are you speaking on being a mother? Unfit and you know that. Anyway, what does a child need 53000 a month for? It's just so weird how everyone and their mama can have an opinion but me due to my occupation. Dehumanizing. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. So Erica responded to Summer and she said this. Summer, I can't see your comment because I'm blocked. But once again, speaking out of place by saying I don't have my child. Check the docs. Joint custody is what we have and we are still in the case. My son is allegedly unable to travel until the case is over due to appointments for his conditions in COVID-19. To keep you updated, your boy's motion, speaking of London, for my psychological evaluation was denied. All my motions were granted. My son would have been home if there was no pandemic. This wouldn't even be public if he didn't leak all the docs to Bossip. So thanks again, but 
but no thanks for speaking on motherhood. What woman supports a man dragging three women and three kids through all this? It's draining, damaging, and my son is getting old enough to know what's going on. My suggestion to you is that you stay in your lane. I didn't have to be so harsh when I worded it earlier, but like I said, I'm tired of you. Be a woman for women like you claim to be instead of distracting him from handling his responsibilities. Support him supporting his children and respect the fact that my son needs his mother to support him with his cerebral palsy. You sound dumb. You know dang well he's not the one taking care of him. When I talk to my son, I see where he at. My well, something must have transpired behind the scenes from Tuesday to Wednesday because take that up with your baby father. I insisted I meet you before the birthday party. He made sure that I met Paris because he knows I'm going to be in his life for a very long time. I don't know what you want me to do. Keep my name out your mouth. You're dead immature, talking about me every week like you don't have nothing else to do. Then she posted again saying, at the end of the day, this clout chasing ain't going to pay your bills. Just let it go. Ebony replied to the latter, writing, at the end of the day, you and your boyfriend have to pay my bills through the government. Congrats on those numbers, Ked. It's so easy to judge these women in this video, but in reality, you just don't know how you're going to react until you're placed in that situation. I feel like there's a lot that we can learn here. So in conclusion, I feel like Summer Walker needs to apologize. We're seeing how she's calling out Black men. We're seeing how she's calling out London. But she has yet to apologize to these women. She owes them an apology, and she owes any single mother out out there that she offended an apology because she gave harsh judgment and condescending remarks as if she doesn't cater to an audience of women. And I felt like it was super disrespectful. But again, this is a lesson that she's going to learn, a hard one at that. And so in my opinion, you never kick the next woman when she's down and you never think that, oh, that can't be me or, oh, that won't happen to me or that can't happen to me. You just never know how quickly tables can turn. And I feel like we as women need to ensure that we are not shaming single mothers. I'm not saying that you have to glorify single motherhood, but you shouldn't shame women either because you just don't know their story. And there are some women out here who were manipulated into having a baby, who were lied into having a baby, who a man said he wore a condom when he didn't, a man saying he pulled out when he didn't, a man just doing things that this woman was not aware of that could have landed her in this type of situation. So it's just so easy to pass judgment because you just don't know. So again, I don't believe that we should glorify single motherhood, but I don't believe that we should shame women either. I feel like we should. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you. I. I appreciated that. Um, apologies for all the chopping up of that video. I had to do it because if I didn't do it, we would watch the entire thing. Um, and we got the, the, the main parts about not shaming women, right? It's not an advocacy for glorification of whatever you find not okay or okay. It doesn't matter, but you don't have to shame people for it. And so this, I think, is emblematic. Like we could go through examples of examples of celebrities, for, uh, for example, uh, coming out, shaming other women, um, choosing their men and defending their men, and then coming out crying about the same thing that they were defending their men against. It's kind of ridiculous at this point. And so part of why we went to the pick me and then we went to learn from other people's experiences because, well, the pick me kind of runs through all of this, right? And I am about to do something that I've never done. I'm going to play Kelly Price's reaction to people coming against Tiana and her uh, marriage or divorce or whatever is happening over with Tiana. And what she had to say was really important because Again, the idea that you're going to fight for men, she's going she's gonna to talk about black manhood, how hard it is, and how you have to stick beside black men. And this, you will see very clearly why we're talking about learning from others under the pick me section or separate from the pick me section, but within the same realm. So let's hear what Kelly Price had to say to people about Tiana Taylor. Please fight for black no matter what the hell they're doing on your blog, your platform, whatever, why go after her? Why say she's dependent? Why say she's one of these dumb black men that's gonna always fight for black no matter what the hell they're doing? Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Yes, we're supposed to hold them accountable, but we're also supposed to fight for them, because guess what? Every day that they leave the house, the whole world is against them. They should have peace when they come home. When they mess up, they should be held accountable, but that ain't our business. How about that? If they got some stuff going on in their marriage, that's between them. If a side piece put it out, or whatever the case may be, it's still between them. I know most people don't understand this, 
marriage is a contract to the law, but in God's eyes, marriage is covenant. And covenant goes way deeper than a contract. Stop going after these wives. Stop going after these wives. I personally know what it is to try to save something for the sake of having a legacy that is unbroken. Most of us come from broken homes. And the truth of the matter is, is all we're trying to do for our families is what was never done for us. Not necessarily our parents' fault, they didn't have the tools. You know, the fact that she speaks up for her family and then there are allegations out there that she comes to the defense of her family and she comes to the defense of her husband. What else is she supposed to do? She's not a side piece. She's not a side hoe. She's a wife. They have a family. They have a home. They own businesses together. If anything is worth fighting for, it is your family, especially if it can be saved. I just don't understand why wives get attacked so bad and side bitches get praised. And then all these people post all of these videos and whatever, y'all, and, and you're just so happy to tell the story. Get your clicks. Get your likes. Do what you got to do. Earn your check. Ain't nobody mad at your hustle. But don't drag her. Don't do that. Don't do that. We got to do better. I'm so tired of black, this black, as buy black. Why should I buy from you? When the first time you get a chance to, you're going to drag my ass. I'm so sick of this. I'm sick of it. Um, I am going to make... How about why wives get attacked and not husbands? Because I feel like it's the husband. Who is the one breaking the covenant right now? Is the side piece the one breaking anything? Like, is there, like, a covenant between the wife and the side piece? I hate the word side piece, by the way, that I don't know about. Because, like, you're saying, why is it the wife getting all the dragging and not the side piece? Why would we drag the side? Why would we drag the other woman? I am not for dragging the other woman. Why not drag the person who cheated? Like, I'm, I'm so confused as to, like, and she's saying this with a very serious face. Like, she is, she is dead serious right now. Like, why aren't y'all dragging the side piece? I don't think that's who we should be dragging. You can be upset that the wife is being dragged, but you don't say, why don't you drag the side piece? You say, okay, don't drag the wife because she didn't do anything. Drag the husband. Oh, wait, you can't say drag the husband because the wife is fighting to stay in the marriage. So you're saying drag the person who did not have any obligation to, to the marriage. She didn't have that here. Look, y'all can make up obligation in your minds. or Y'all can sit there and make up obligations all you want, but these other women do not have any obligation to your marriage. They cannot respect your marriage more than the people in the marriage respect the marriage. What do you mean? You want them to have more respect for your marriage than the men in your marriage? No, drag the people. I'm not even doing this with Kelly Price. Beautiful singer, though. Why say she's dependent? Why say she's one of these dumb black men that's going to always fight for black no matter what the hell they're doing? Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Yes, we're supposed to hold them accountable, but we are also supposed to fight for them. Because guess what? Every day that they leave the house, the whole world is against them. They should have peace when they come home. When they mess up, they should be held accountable. But that ain't our business. How about that? If they got some stuff going on in their marriage, that's between them. If a side piece put it out or whatever the case may be, it's still between them. I know most people don't... It is not between them. It is between them and that side person. <laughs> it is between them and whoever they let it... All right, girl, period. Understand this? Marriage is a contract to the law, but in God's eyes, marriage is covenant. And covenant goes way deeper than a contract. Covenant... I'm sorry, does he know this? Does, does he know this? I'm not talking about their specific relationship. I'm talking about relationship generally where the man is cheating. Does he know that covenant goes deeper than law and contract? It don't look like he knows, because if he knows, he wouldn't be the one out there cheating. All right, girl, period. I don't know who you're telling this to. You need to tell your husbands. Like, the, the husbands need to know about what this government is. Takes off where contracts end. And if you know anything about covenants, they are blood in and blood out. Believe what you want to believe. I'm asking you, Black, on your platform, report the story, do your job. That's your job. I'm not mad at you doing your job. But why are you going off on the wife? She has something to fight for. They have children. They have homes. They have built a life together. If anything is worth... All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Because I feel like... They also got this story wrong because thankfully Tiana came out. This is not about Tiana, so I, it doesn't matter. But Tiana came out and said, no, girl, we decided to, like, go separately. We've been divorced. We've been separated, at least. So I don't know what these people are talking about, but go off. Saving, that is... 
So rather than tearing her down and talking about how stupid she is that she speaks up for her husband when all this stuff keeps coming out, if you don't have nothing good to say about that, first of all, I ain't none of your business. I don't care if you are a blogger. And if you don't believe in prayer, or if you want to know that God ain't gonna hear your prayer anyway because your own life is trifling while you're reporting on everybody else's, just keep your mouth off of these wives. They have children. They have assets. There's a reason for her to fight. I don't know if it's true or not, but I know Tiana. I'm not one of these people that's always online flossing who I know and posting. What I, I done been in this business almost 33 years. Ain't too many people I don't know with my old self. Y'all keep telling me auntie is old. I'm glad to be old. One way to not get old is to be young. Thank God that I saw 50 because I almost didn't. Y'all stop going after these wives. Stop going after these wives. I personally know what it is to try to save something for the sake of having a legacy that is unbroken. Most of us come from broken homes. And the truth of the matter is, is all we're trying to do for our families is what was never done for us. Not necessarily our parents' fault. They didn't have the tools. But we try to give our children two-parent homes. Okay, so here's the problem that I have with this. While you're trying to give your, peer, your kids two-parent home, he's not about to try to do that. And that's an unfortunate reality. It is what it is. So if you are the only one in there trying to give a two-parent home by yourself, then guess what? It's not going to be a two-parent home. He has to also want to give it a, make it a two-parent home. Like, you can't make it a two-parent home by your... <laughs> ah! Do you believe you should be fighting for black men no matter what they're doing? Because that's what she said, and I don't believe that's why. Fighting for them because the whole world is against them, still not right. You don't mean you have an excuse to go do whatever you want. Covenant goes deeper than contract. I have no clue what she's talking about. Uh, unless the husband knows this, I don't know. She She's the only one who knows about Covenant. Because if the husband don't know, she, she whatever. Drag the husband, not the side chick. That's also something that I would say. Uh, what else? I think this mentality is kind of sick. It is what it is. Do not let fighting for a man, or anyone for that matter, that does not deserve your advocacy be the downfall of you and your brand. Plus, let's be clear, Light Skin Keisha, I'm just going back to Light Skin Keisha with this context, is not married. And she sat around so even if you're taking Kelly Price's stance and applying it to Light Skin Keisha, she sat around while other women were being cheated on and then comes out and says, um, I'm glad you got it out of your city. I actually would like someone to ask her that. Like, do you feel bad that you said, I got, I'm got? i glad you got it out of your system because I'm not going. So those other girls could get cheated on, but just as long as you don't cheat on me, I'm fine. I, I, I would like someone to, to see that. Let me continue, though. And so at the end of the day, I speak on facts. He did not block her. He blocked you because she has her. His daughter has his number. You use her. You use your daughter's phone to attack him and to be able to get in contact with him and cuss him out any chance that you get because you are bitter. That's what happens. What happened was is you threatened to call the police on us after we tried to make arrangements to drop her off to you. That's what happened. What happened was is that your your daughter was crying, boohoo crying because she did not want to go home because she said her mama does too much and she's always mean and she cusses everybody out. That's what happened. The only way for this to age is like milk. By the way, the mother has been talking for forever online. So this is nothing new. When Light Skin Keisha posted her pregnancy. It is my belief that the mother, the first child's mother, was not being altruistic in her post, and she was being mean, vindictive even. But something doesn't have to be altruistic for it to be true. And even if it is not true what this mother is saying about her child's father, it is my belief that this is not light skin Keisha's fight. Again, the only way for these comments to age is like milk. It is my hope that at least Coco Van Gogh will see that most people believe this is not going to go end well for light skin Keisha. And when he decides to act up, he chooses not to. 
if nothing else, for her sake. The pygmy personality, I believe, ignores how men treat other women because of competition and wanting to win in said competition where they treat having the man, even if not the man himself, as a prize. It's hard to learn from other people's experience when you think that other women are just not good enough. They weren't good enough, and you are not like other girls. Therefore, he will treat you better because you are exceptional. Therefore, you can have the good life that she couldn't get because she wasn't good enough. That is a problem, it is a facade, and it allows for men to run amok and for women to continue to blame women for how men are acting and treating other women. The fault in this way is removed from the man behaving badly, and the woman is now put center stage to fix herself, be more submissive, make sandwiches, be better in bed, speak softer, be kinder, be his pillar and his pillow. (laughs) So the man does not have to behave well. He can continue to behave poorly. What incentives would there be for this man to be better if all the women is going to do is blame other women for them not being good enough? And the next woman will just try harder to be better, and you can just keep doing that. You are setting yourself up to fail and be ridiculed, light-skinned Keisha. It is my opinion that this cannot go well. So, let's move to the conclusion and find an example, I believe, of what women that I see reacting to their boyfriend cheating or other women, how women who are secure in themselves, in my opinion, or at least understand social media enough to know how to engage, engages well. Let's do that. Young Blue's wife, for example, did something spectacular. And instead of talking about it, let me show you what happened. And I will explain, hopefully I don't have to explain much because the video is way too long, why it is so useful. Young Blue Wife took to her Instagram story to put him on blast. She said, Ninja, stay trying to fly bees out. Don't nobody want to lick on that shard, A, you know what. Y'all can have his desperate behind, big teeth, A, B word. She also said that the female was not lying on Young Blue. She could take the best divorce lawyer in Georgia. Yeah, so I was just, you know, I made a little post on Instagram. I barely checked my messages. And um, someone just told me to check my filter messages. So I look at my messages. Somebody was like, um, did you see that post about the girl um, saying that Blue flew her out? So I was like, well, you know, I went to go see. I'm trying to look for it. I can't find it. So um, he laying on the side of me. So I mentioned it to him, and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay, well, I'm finna find it. So I hope she, you know, I hope this shit is just a joke. So he gets up, y'all, the boy laying in the bed ass naked. We about to get ready to go to bed. He hops out the bed. (laughs) Brandon put drawers on. Ran out the house to the guest house. So I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Y'all, I still haven't found the video. I don't even know what the fuck video nobody's talking about. Yeah, so I'm like, Jeremy, where did you go? He was like, oh, I'm over here talking to Ted. I said, what you talking to Ted for? Why are you acting so nervous? Y'all, the boy... He said, oh, I found the video. Like, he real deal just trying to act like the girl is lying on him. So I was like, well, send the video to me. Like, let me see. I want to see what, what, what everybody's talking about. So I'm looking at the video, y'all. The girl posted a receipt. This bitch then ran out the door, ran out the house. So I'm watching the video. Like, as I'm watching it, I stop it. Every time she say something, and I know the whole ain't lying because he weird as fuck. Every time she say something, and I know she's telling the truth about it, I will pause it 
And I'll say something to him because he's texting me back and forth doing the whole thing. When he ran outside, he's texting me the whole time. So um, I go outside and I'm like, big. So I, I said to him, I said, Jeremy, this girl is not fucking lying on you. This girl got video of your lame ass on the plane looking like a motherfucking big teeth ass milk dud with them ugly ass motherfucking braids in your head. This bitch is not lying on you at all. She's not lying on you. She got so many motherfucking receipts. He running all through the yard trying to run from me like I'm gonna chase him down. Bitch, I'm not gonna chase you. What you gonna do, bitch? You gonna sleep outside and I hope Boots are gonna get you. <laughs> And I hope Booster come get your motherfucking ass. He ain't got no car keys. He ain't got no house keys. He can't get in this motherfucker. I'm going to wrap this up. To conclude, and I'm not saying you have to do all of that online. I'm just saying, be. hopefully we can all be secure in who we are. Do not be so vain as to believe that that wish happened. And this is about light skin Keisha again. Do not be so vain as to believe that that which happened to the prior person can never happen to you because you were, quote, raised better. You got the man, which in a lot of your minds means you have won. I'm not sure what you've won exactly if the prize is him who cheats on people in the past and you are the first person he is with that he is now going to be faithful to. Good luck. But be smart about your flex. Be smart about how and what you defend. Your season of prosperity attracts people to you, and they will use it up. And When it is gone, they will be gone also. You sat by and you watch your fiancé mistreat women after women after women. You sat in front of him and deny this reality until he forces you to remember what he did to other women. You then said, I'm glad you got that out of your system because I ain't going. And you started to laugh at the pain of other women before you because somehow you were better than them and you're going to prove you're better than them because you're going to get the ring, you're going to get the wedding, and you're going to get the happily ever after. If I were you, I would not get too comfortable. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think I am. Have a wonderful night, everyone, and I'll see you when I get back.